Mr. Joffe, the listing on the 7th of April of Long for Life. Have the last couple of months given you a new lease on life? On life. Well, it's definitely different. Uh, starting Greenfields, after having all that we've done with Bidvest over the last 30 years odd, but uh, very challenging and very excited about what the prospects are. You created so much shareholder mm. value in Bidvest. Do you think you've still got the Midas touch, so to speak? Well, I don't know about Midas touch. I think uh, these wealth creation is a contribution of many people. And hopefully the team that we've got together with Kevin Hedewick uh, with me, I think we've got a good chance of, of doing something special. Peter Riskovitz joined you as a CFO. How is the executive team working together? We're great. Uh, we've got offices and uh, we even can send a letter and an email at the moment. So things are looking up and, you know, we've obviously done one deal sorbet and we're now in the process of trying to complete whole sport. Um, so let's talk about the deals on or the deal on the table with regards to hold sport. Ultimately, it'll become a wholly owned subsid subsidiary for Long for Life. Uh, right now, is this the start of a foray into the sports apparel environment or, or do you think you're going to keep it at uh, Sportsman's Warehouse, Outdoor Warehouse and, and I think Second Skin is another of their brands? So I think for us, uh, we, our objective was to get into the leisure space and this for us is a platform changing uh, activity. I mean it's a transaction that doubles the market capitalization of, of Long for Life. We've still got two billion of cash um, unfortunately, what's going on at the moment, of course, is a lot of arbitrage because of whole sport price versus the long for life price. But once that's all settled down and out the way, you know, and a few other deals along along the way, and hopefully and we'll get it together. And arbitrage, obviously, putting your share price under pressure today until it all settles. Look, it's a lo it's you, the a mechanics. Perhaps you can just, for the layperson, explain the mechanics of the deal, which you're hoping to to basically conclude a straight equity deal. Correct. Well. So th there are two, two alternatives for Hull Sport shares, either to take 12.1 for every uh, Long for Life shares for every Hull Sport or 11.20 plus 5 Rand for every Hull Sport share. Um, and that Hull Sport will become a wholly owned subsidiary. And as you said, we'll obviously look at developing each of the component pieces of Hull Sport, which offer a lot of opportunity. Uh, what's interesting in, in the retail space is that if you have a look at uh, Amazon now, Amazon are now also putting some feet into hard assets on the ground in order to be able to develop. So I think for us, the big opportunity is to develop the online part of Hold Sport together with the on the ground assets that it's got. Hold Sports uh, financial year end is February 2017, 5.8% uh, growth on the revenue line to, to the end of, of February. You, you're obviously thinking that you can ramp that up significantly, perhaps with the online strategy being aggressive? Well, look, I mean, we obviously wouldn't have bought it unless we think we can make a contribution to it. I think we'd be, we, we, we intend to be a lot more aggressive in marketing and building the, the brands and the component pieces of whole sport. But, you know, this tough, is a difficult uh, space Many would say this is a tough retail environment given the fact mm. that South Africa is not growing at all. In fact, it's contracting. That doesn't scare you off. I suppose the timing uh, is about picking up assets um, at, a, at a price that you're prepared to pay right now and then it, hoping that the cycle will turn. So if you have a look at the cash-based value of the transaction, about 6.7 times EBITDA, which is okay. I mean, I'm not saying this is the cheapest deal they've ever done, but for us, this was important for us to get a platform change. We needed to have assets. We got 360-odd million plus uh, sorbet, about 380 million now of EBITDA, so, and two, 2 billion in the bank. So I think from our point of view, this is a good start. And so we're optimistic about what we can do with it. Um, you're absolutely right. I mean. If the cycle had changed, you wouldn't have been able to do the transaction at this price. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it is expensive. It's a difficult space, but you know, whole sports not really in the fashion business. I mean, it's sixty percent of its of its activities on sporting goods, and I don't. I think it's got about thirty-four sportsman warehouse stores uh, countrywide, and then obviously and the outdoor, outdoor warehouse uh, component as well. Yeah. So. As I say, I mean, for us, we want to develop this thing. We're thinking about opening smaller stores. We've got some good ideas, and, you know, Kevin is, is a good operations person, and we've been talking about this, and 
Look, we're in the early stage development business, and uh, you know I don't want to say that this is this is a small little business. Our market cap will be about four and a half, five billion, whatever after we finish the whole sport if we get if we get it done. So we're basically a small cap share, but with a lot of good ideas. In terms of the second half of this year, any else that shareholders can can anticipate are, look, you, are you looking aggressively at we're deals? aggressively looking at deals we've got stuff on the table that we're looking at um, you know, converting them of course always is an issue and South Africa's got a lot of red tape in consummating transactions so they take time and as you get bigger those the transactions take longer um, currently we're not conflicted with anything because we basically got only cash so we don't really have the the long trail of competition issues and other things that may flow from transactions. But transaction making in South Africa is not like in the old days. Now it's a, each transaction is a three month. Again, but given your, your reputation, do you, do you feel a certain pressure from shareholders for you to, to deliver in the near term? Well or are you I, just putting that to one side? Well, I hired a security guard since the price yesterday was eight and it's probably about six now. So I have to find a security guard. No, not at all. I think. I've always had the, the view that if you do the right thing for the company, the prices and the shareholder value takes care of itself. You can't rush it and you can't create shareholder value by, by way of the share price. The only way you can create shareholder value is by making sure the assets within the company are well managed, you get a proper return on those assets and you're reasonably prudent in the acquisition trail that you go on. So, but time will tell. Listen, you know, we're three months or four months old, the business. And if you've doubled the market cap and we, you know, uh, our headline earnings, even if they don't count them for much, uh, is, is almost double what we were anticipating. Uh, and we're in the game. We're Let's playing. revisit your vision to basically build, and, and please uh, correct me if I'm wrong, to build a conglomerate in the lifestyle and leisure space. space. Would that be your, your stated vision? Well, I don't know about the word conglomerate, and it reminds me of the early days of Bedvest as well. Yeah, we're looking to invest in assets that are in the lifetime leisure space. Um, but that doesn't mean that's what we'll eventually land up doing. We're a bit opp opportunistic, we're entrepreneurial, and we need to scale up the business. So, you know, in order for us to play in the bigger market generally, we need a bigger market cap and we need more, more wherewithal. I mean, whole sports giving us an extra billion rands worth of gearing capacity, if you add that to the two billion we've got. So we're at three billion, and so the deal sizes are getting bigger and, and the opportunities are getting more. Five years out, where do you see long for life? First is I hope I'm yet to, to see what I'm telling you. <laughs> now look. I'm sure you will be, Brian. <laughs> um, I, I don't know, I wouldn't like to forecast, but I would be disappointed if we don't have above average growth. I mean, the objective of this thing wasn't to be pedestrian. It's not something you start out at 70 and say, well, listen, I'm going to have a 25-year view of life. This is going to be an aggressive uh, vehicle. Um, and hopefully the deals that we do will all be able to be managed well and we'll be able to add value to. And if we achieve that, I mean, then obviously we'll have exponential growth. And that's what we're really wanting to do. So, you know, people who say that deals are expensive, well, maybe we will have to overpay a little bit because we want to be aggressive in what we're wanting, uh, wanting to achieve. So it's not a question of, holding out and, and whatever, we need to get the deals done and we need to make sure at the end of the day that we get this exponential growth. Other territories that could be offering value at the moment <coughs> besides South Africa, are you going to look, I mean you're so used to playing on the global stage, are you going to look further afield? Well I think one is, it's all a question of timing. I think we need to have a cash generation engine which is going to enable us to play abroad. I think for us to buy small assets abroad and to still have smaller assets even in South Africa, I don't think is a good strategy. So as long as Long for Life is relatively small, I think the chances of us expanding to offshore is just about zero. I mean, if Long for Life gains momentum and we have a significant enough cash flow and, and, and management team to manage an offshore asset of reasonable size, yeah, then maybe we would want to do it. But in, the, in its current form, I think the answer is no. Let's come back to the transaction on the table at the moment with regards to Hold Sport. You're known to go in and put a heavy hand into an existing company to generate the, the kind of growth you are expecting. 
Can you give me any sense of, of what you will do um, well, with uh, Holtzport being a, a, yeah. a wholly owned subsidiary? I think heavy hand, I'm not sure what that means, but let's put that aside. I, I mean that in a positive sense, as so in you've got to derive the value out of your transaction. Yeah, so I think for us, decentralization is going to be the key driver for us. I think Holtzport is pretty central, centrally driven. We want to decentralize. We want separate management teams for the di different segments of the business. We want those people to get returns. We want them to make their own acquisitions. We want to expand each of the component pieces, not only the whole. So it's not a centrally. It's not going to be a centrally managed business. It's going to be aggressively decentrally managed. And I is think retention of the current management team important to you? Yes, I think. We, look, I mean, if I take our history, we've always retained management, and I think the current management are buying into this vision. Obviously, we've had some discussion with them about what we want to do. I think they're quite excited about what the opportunities for them are and hopefully us together with them because we don't have people to run the business. I mean, we're just two or three of us. So we want, we, you know, we, we want them to do it. And I think they've got the skill set to be able to do it. I don't want to miss anything and this opportunity to sit down with you. Other questions that you've been asked during the course of the today regards the transaction? Well, look, I mean, the, the questions of today, of course, is why is the share price so, so off? I mean, that's been the But it's the, the question. arbitrage. But it's an arbitrage thing that's obviously based off uh, uh, whole sport. So if you want to get into long for life, maybe you've got to buy whole sport. I mean, uh, you know, the transaction is not a certainty. I mean, obviously, we need 75% of the shareholders of both companies still to vote in favor. But, I mean, there's a good chance that it will happen. And so. And how quickly do you think, if, if it is going to go through, how quickly will it happen? Well, I think, you know, the, the biggest issue will be the Competition Commission. I mean, there is no real issue because, as I said, we don't have anything. So. I don't know how long that will take, whether it will take the normal extended period of time or the Competition Commission will be lenient on us and do it quickly. But, you know, I, I would guess that within two to three months this thing should be in the wrapped up. Brian, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I'm chatting to Brian Joffe, the CEO of Long for Life.